All right, so let's go ahead, guys, and talk. Like I said, today, our topic is going to be residential utility interactive and um, system, solar system. Um, I want to emphasize the word residential. So when you see the word residential in the US, you're looking at 240-120 volt system, right? That's a system that we use, typically residential. Interactive solar photovoltaic system, this is a system that can be directly connected to the grid. It's not a standalone system. So just FYI, and we'll talk about, um, in a few seconds, guys, we'll talk about different ways of connecting a solar photovoltaic system. A solar photovoltaic system, Matt, is another source of energy that you can consume. Clean energy, that's the push for the whole clean energy in the U.S. Great, great clean energy, a little bit expensive. There's a lot of incentives to get um, in the States um, right now and in the past, and it will be in the future to install these solar systems. Okay, um, so let's talk about what we... the what we're trying to achieve guys identify components this system has components when i the components of this i can't emphasize the word utility interactive utility interactive the term means and a lot of people don't understand if it says utility interactive it means if the utility is down the solar system is down very very important that's what utility interactive means you will not be able to run the solar system if the electrical utility is not running at them does that make sense that's what the interactive is. There is a grid, there is the, there is the solar. There is no grid, no solar. So it can be used as an emergency backup system. This type of solar interactive, it has to run when the grid is there. That's how it's designed. Um, solar, of course, coming from the sun, photovoltaic. We call the, the term photovoltaic is generating electricity. That's what we care. There's solar thermal. I don't know how many of you guys have seen the solar thermal. We can heat water through they have all over. Uh, they can have heat water. You get hot water from the sun. That's going to call the solar thermal. We are solar photovoltaic systems. Um, so that's the component. Then the hazard. What happens if you have an arc flash right on the top of the roof? Where is the where your arc? Uh, where you have your solar photovoltaic system? What? What? How destructive a DC arc would be, or a DC short circuit? So we'll talk a few things about this one. Um, and then national the code, guys. We're going to talk about Article 690. Article 690, that's the article that talks about uh, how to design and install a solar photovoltaic system. I will highlight a few things for you. Um, so that's, these are a few topics. Um, so photovoltaic system, this is just a couple of history, guys. Believe it or not, uh, the solar photovoltaic system has been in, I was surprised, when I when I discovered that has been in the NBC cookbook since 1984. Were you born, Matt, in 1984? Were you? You were not. Okay. Were you born? Okay. Karen, you and I were. I know we were. In 1984, your friend Chad was in the grade school. You're looking at him right now. <laughs> so <laughs> I was in the grade school, right, uh, Karen? You probably were in the grade school too. 84? You were not. Okay, so you're younger than me. All right, so in 1984, that's before in our time. So why? And the push right now in the U.S. came in the 2000, in the late uh, late, uh, late 2000, um, in 2010 and so forth. And the, the whole idea, guys, it's energy. We have uh, relatively cheap energy in the U.S. And unless you have the energy becomes more expensive, solar was not going to fly. So... A few things why we had the solar photovoltaic system in the national NEC since 1894. And why is it becoming so popular these days? Wow, dressed up today. What's going on here? <laughs> so why is it becoming so popular, guys? Um, use of electricity in the U.S. becoming increased. Demand is increased. When the demand increased, the, the most important thing when the demand increase, the price of electricity got increased. I know we got tanked, the economy got tanked for a while, but the more electricity we use, demand, the more the price of that electricity will go. So that um, the cost, that will drive the cost, increase of cost of electricity in the U.S. Uh, then it becomes more expensive. People start looking at alternative alternative sources. Then um, a lot of us, I don't know if you care if you're one of us, but uh, or one of the people who are like my wife and I, uh, tree huggers. The tree huggers grew up in the U.S. A lot of people, if they're not tree huggers, they become closer to 
So environmental concerns, and I'm not telling you, I mean, it used to be when you say environmentally, those are the, the knuckleheads. Now, major companies, every single company you go work for, they want to be environmentally friendly. So it's kind of that trend in the industry. That's a major shift in the philosophy of doing business in the U.S., not in other parts of the world we had a long time ago. So environmentally friendly, you can't go, you're working, uh, you're going to be working on Mishad, you go there. All of them are lead accredited professionals. You're going to hear the word lead accredited professionals. When they design, lead accredited professional, those are professional design in the back of their mind how to take care of the rabbits in the wilderness, <laughs> not just build the building. So, so that's a major thing shift in the philosophy. Environmental concern with the use of fossil fuel because we're making more holes in the ozone and we're going to leave a better earth for our children. I think all of us agree somewhat with, with that philosophy. So that's a major thing. Um, dependence on foreign oil is another thing after September 11. We don't, uh, we still depend on a lot of foreign oil, but we would like to have another alternative source of energy. That was another, another uh, reason. And probably the one single most important reason is the efficiency, the solar photovoltaic system becoming more, a lot more efficient. You can have a panel um, and you can get 250 watt out of one panel. So you put them together, 10 of them, you get yourself 2.5 kilowatt a system. So they're becoming more efficient. They give more juice um, um, and the price is lower, more efficient, lower price. With all these more efficient system, lower price of these systems, with a push with increase in the, in the use of electricity, environmental concern that people are happy about taking care of Mother Earth, don't want to depend on foreign oil. All these got a really good push in the last, I would say, 10 years of the solar photovoltaic system. You find a lot of people are installing them in Wisconsin and Minnesota and elsewhere. I don't know if you guys have seen the plants, the electrical utility. Electrical utilities are getting into the business. They're planting all these solar um, and uh, um, sun built in the U.S. and they're they're wrapping all this um, energy and using it to offset the, uh, the the fossil fuel energy. It's unreal. So there was a program in uh, public TV. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I can't remember. It's Nevada in the desert in Nevada or or somewhere else. You know what they're using instead of using solar to generate electricity, they're using solar panels like this to reflect the sun. So they have a boiler, they have water here or some type of liquid. So what they're doing, they're collecting the sun and they're reflecting it into that tank that full of water and they're boiling water. They're boiling water using electricity. They're turning, I don't know if you guys seen it, it was on public TV, unreal for one of the utilities. Have you seen it? Is it California? I'm sorry, in California. So they're putting these big mirrors. They are not solar photovoltaic. They are mirrors reflecting the sun, collecting the sun energy, reflecting it directly into a big container full of, uh, of water. And they're boiling water. They're turning water into steam. When you guys turn water into steam, you know what you get? That's exactly how we generate electricity. We turn water into steam by either burning natural gas or burning whatever you want to burn, fossil fuel or coal or nuke so the whole idea of burning something is the concept of generating electricity when you burn it you convert it into steam steam is full of energy and you throw that steam across a turbine and you rotate that turbine and you get yourself a um, hundred megawatt uh, plant so what they're doing is they, they, they steam it they bring it down here into after they steam it they convert it to steam you put it into a turbine and you rotate that turbine and you generate electricity. That's another concept. Again, this is not solar photovoltaic at all. This is, but also utilizing the solar energy. This is solar thermal generating um, solar photovoltaic. So just be aware of that one. Um, okay, um, electrical work for installation is not complex. I can't emphasize the word, it's not complex, but you need to know it. There's like a few rules and uh, regulations how to, to install it. Um, Significant, significant differences compared to typical residential wiring. There is a few things that you have to take into consideration. For example, a lot of disconnects. You have to install a lot of disconnects. You have to put them in conduit to protect them from uh, from being um, penetrated through to holes and so forth. Um, Supply electricity. And the single most important thing, guys, is solar photovoltaic is a generating plant. It's not a load. So when you put a couple of panels on the top of your roof, these are not a load. 
unlike putting an air conditioning, which is consuming electricity, putting a bunch of panel, you are installing a generator. You're in the business of generating energy instead of consuming it. So that's a major, major part. Um, we'll talk about this one, guys. I'll highlight a few, a few things in Article 690 that talks about solar photovoltaic system, how it works, how it's put together, and how do you install it. Any comments, guys? Any questions so, so far? Comments, questions about solar photovoltaic system? I'll get you into... Um, Okay, let's talk about how the system is put together. These are very, very important, guys, component to the system. You got yourself a module, bunch of modules here, full of uh, solar photovoltaic cells. The most important, the soul of the solar photovoltaic is the modules, these so-called panels. These panels have solar, they have, um, they have um, uh, solar cells, and these cells are meant to take the, the solar energy and convert it into a volt that push apps. When you convert solar energy into a volt and that pushes amps, what did you get? Electrical energy. That's the soul, like I said, the soul of the whole electrical energy, the modules. That's it. That's how we generate. We take all these photons, the light rays, they hit the um, um, semiconducting material, uh, semiconducting material there, and when you hit it, it converts, it converts these um, these photons into volts. When you connect the load across it, it turns the volts, it pushes amps. And when you get volt amps, what is electrical energy? Volt amps. Got yourself power. That's the soul. Now, the, like I said, without this, that's where the, the heart of the system is, the modules. You're going to see it in a second. Now, it's not enough to have a heart. You need to put the heart in the body, right? <laughs> so it can function. So that's where the brackets come, mounting brackets. We need to mount them. We mount these, put the heart in the body. That's what comes the mounting brackets into them. After we mount them, now we physically put them, then we need to wire them. How are you going to wire them? You'll see in a second. There's something called a combiner and a transition box. We need to, we put the soles, connect them together, put them on the brackets, hold to hold them. We have a box underneath them that's called combiner. It's a junction box. Bring all these wires into that junction box. That's what, what, what a combiner is. Then you pull them from the junction box into an inverter. When we generate this, we generate DC. You're going to see in a second. You cannot, in the U.S. and elsewhere in the world, we do not utilize electrical energy on a DC level. Long time, we lost this battle. That was the battle between Tesla and Edison, right? When Tesla kicked Edison's butt, basically, <laughs> and um, and win the war of the current, right? We won the war of the current. Ultimately, here's the here's the irony, as Karen. The irony is we're going back into Edison's. Uh, philosophy of distributing energy that that was that was a war uh between the war of the current between acdc now there's there is talk about what if we what if we have equipment that run on dc then we don't have to do the conversion right so anyway so now because we at this moment because we don't utilize a whole lot of energy at the dc level in the power industry we have to convert it so the inverter will take your dc the beautiful dc convert it to ac then you can, so you can run your air conditioning and so forth. Okay, so that's it, we converted it. Then we have to throw that system connected to the grid. So we have a, a bunch of several disconnect. Disconnects are meant for safety. You need to disconnect on the DC level, you need to disconnect on the AC level. So a bunch of disconnect. And with that comes a bunch of grounding electrode system. You have to pull on a grounding electrode system with it, like uh, the power system. So these are the major components. Any comments, guys, any questions? So the, the really the main things is modules mounted on racket, uh, or uh, on racks and with a combiner collecting that energy, dumping it into an inverter that converts it into AC. You're going to see a couple of pictures in a second. <clears throat> what does it do for a living? Like I said, the heart of the solar photovoltaic system, guys, is the module, the modules. Um, they are the production, they call them the production, the power production unit. They are the ones who take the photons, the energy, the solar energy, convert it into electrical energy. That's it. Without it, you're not nothing. You just have a mirror. Okay. Um, what do they make them? Thanks to the sand again. Is that mean? That sand, can you believe that they take that sand cookie and they make a computer? Does it bother you guys that the laptop that you're right in front of you is made out of sand? The semiconductors inside. Did you guys know that? They make them out of. Can you? Can you? I mean, <laughs> take a bunch of sand on the beach and cook them and make semiconductors. Does it bother you? It bothers me. I'm an engineer. I studied it when I was in here. It still bothers me. 
you know. <laughs> and the same thing, solar photovoltaic system is no difference. Instead of taking the sand cookie, making a laptop, they take the sand cookie, they make a solar photovoltaic panel, exactly the same concept, semiconductors. So they take the semiconductor photovoltaic cells, and positive, negative little cells, they, the photons hit them. When you hit them, they, it takes the energy, convert it into voltage. Little tiny little voltage. They collect these tiny little voltages on these cells, collect them in series, guys, and at the end, you got your 38 volt panel. 38 volt panel, that's substantial, you know, at one amp or two amps. And then they keep adding these panels. Here's one amp, two amp, three amps, four amps, or 38, add more voltages, and, and they build the power system. Okay, so PVC, in, so the cells are in the PVC, everything, you can't, semiconductor, look at the semiconductor in front of you guys in laptop. It's in case to be protected, right? You can't just put semiconductors and put electricity in them and expect them to work and function. You need to protect them, so they encase them in a pro, uh, uh, protective covering and mounted on an aluminum frame. So photovoltaic cell, protect them, mount them in aluminum frame. Anybody knows why they use aluminum, not steel? Wait, you're putting things on a roof, right? So when you put things on a roof, the first and most important things, every time you touch with a roof, guys, structurally speaking, is weight. So they put them on the aluminum because aluminum is weight um, uh, is lower. Okay, so that's it. Here's how it looks like, guys, the system. We'll look at this one. Here's your solar. Um, so you have your solar panel right in here. And uh, what, what, what you do is you have the solar modules. Here's your cells that generate all this. Uh, this is called the solar, uh, the modules. You put multiple modules. If you put a multiple, you have the solar cells, these little tiny little things. Multiple cells will make a modules. Multiple modules will make a panel. They make a panel. And then ultimately they take these three modules and they say, well, this module is rated for 38 volt at 250 uh, watt. That's it. That's one module rated at the end. There are two wires coming out of this module. Two wires, one wire, two wire, positive and negative. And if you go there and measure the positive and the negative voltage in DC, you will get 38 volts. And if you hook up a light, you can hook, hook up up to 250 watts. How many bulbs, 100 watts bulbs are, or 50 watt bulbs are these? That would be five, five bulbs, 50 watt each. Or two bulbs, two and a half bulbs, 100 watt each. You can power out of this module. Not a whole lot of power. But imagine adding more of these solar panels. What do you get? More and more and more power. So that's the whole concept, guys, of, um, of building your solar system. The system that we did here at Dunwoody, I believe it was 38 volts. So imagine, here's what they what they take. Here's, imagine 10 of these. One, two, three, four. Here's a five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? Take these. Here's each one of them. That's how you build your system. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And all the way, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, so that's what you build your system. Look how easy that is. These are right with you if you guys go what we did at our, our, our building right here. The way they do it is they go, so each one of these is 38 volt, 38 volt, right? Now what happened if you put a one and a half, Karen, you put one and a half volt battery with another one and a half volt battery. What do you what, what do you get in series? Three volt, right? To add them up. So the, you connect them in series. How do you connect them in series? Po negative to positive or positive to negative, positive to negative. So here's what you what you go. And then um, we're gonna go all the way into here to catch this one. And then positive to negative, positive to negative. And at the end, you're gonna end up one wire coming out of here and one wire coming out of here, and here's your negative, here's your positive. So each one of them is 380. If you have 10 of them, how many volts do you have at the end? 380, yeah, 380 volts. Gentlemen, that's the system that we have now. See how easy that is? Exactly like batteries. Positive to negative, positive to negative, lube them up. Each one of them is rated for 38, and then what, how many do you get? 380 volt. What? Now that's a volt, what? So now 380 volt, that's a, a substantial amount of power. 
Then what? Each one of these three, 250. 250, what? Now, do me a favor. At the end, the whole plant here, what is it rated for? 380 volt and uh, 250 times 10 is what? 2.5. 2.5 kW. Now, I got myself 2.5 kW system. 2.5 kW system is enough to take care of your house. Light and receptacles, excluding your air conditioning, your major equipment. Anything that run at 2.4, exclude this. Like range, dryers, uh, air conditioning. Exclude this. That's enough to run your house. 2.5 kW. See how easy that symbol is? This is what, you, what we have right now on the, on the top of our world. Though we rewired it slightly different. Any comments, guys? Any questions? So you got your positive, negative here. There's one other problem. I can't burn equipment at 380 volt DC. Do we? Can we? Can't. Can we? Can if we design the equipment for that. So take this. They take the positive and the negative that came out of this system that you're looking at here, and they put it in an inverter. Inverter. That guy comes out of here, and the residential guys comes out of. Um, a neutral is my neutral, hot one, hot two, and they bring it to a panel. So now you've got your AC here, you've got your DC here. This is DC slash DC slash AC converter. That inverter is an electronic piece of equipment that goes choose it, it, it choose the electricity and convert it from DC into an AC. It interrupts the DC electronically and create an AC system. And the system that we use in dwelling is a 240 slash 120 volt system. 240 slash 120 volt system. That's exactly a typical installation. 10 panels, 250 watt, uh, 380 volt. Typical installation, or one of the typical installations that you can do in a house. Small system. Do you need more power? Can anybody tell me what you do if you need more power? There are two ways if you need more power that you can do. Number one, you can add more panels. I have 10. How about if we make 20? We'll look at the voltage now. The voltage is becoming 600 and almost 700. You don't want to add more than. You exceed the 600, guys, it becomes, you can, but you can't install it in dwellings. The limitation is 600 volt. You can't install more than 600 volt in dwellings. Hadan Woody, bring it on. You can have 1,000, 2,000 volt here. Add him, add him up, you know, but it becomes, you know, you're dealing with higher than 600 volt or 1,000 volt different regulations. Now what happened then, I can't exceed the voltages. Can anybody tell me what else can I do if I don't want to exceed the voltages? How about adding another string? They call it string. Can you just see these ends here? I have 10 of them in one string. You know what they do? They bring another string right here and they tie in like this. Here's another, um, this would be 2.5, 2.5K. 2.5k so i have enough imagine another set of another 10 another 10 with two wires and at the end here's the two the first string the second string positive to positive negative to negative you have another string now what the heck is a string here's what string is a string is a multiple panels hooked up in series and at the end you have a positive and negative them and they have voltage and power in them that's a string you need two strings, no problem. Repeat the whole thing, and you take the, the positive negative string one, tie them to the positive and negative string two, parallel. Now, gentlemen, you do it this way. You tie them. Now I got, instead of 2.5 kW, I got myself 5 kW. 20 panels in two strings. Now, you can, you can imagine if you need more power, what do you do? Another string, 30 panels. 40 panels, 50 panels. What's the problem with adding more panels? Expensive, of course, and now you need room, space. Can you put 50 panels on the top of your roof? Do you have enough room even on your top of your roof to put 50 panels? You can't. So what do they do? Typically, you end up with 10 panels, get you 2.5, maybe depending on the panel, 3, 3.5 kW. That will offset, that will cover 80% of your energy use. 80% is better than nothing, right? So to, in order to have 100% of your energy use, depending on how much energy you use, um, if you get rid of your electrical range, for example, make a gas range, gone, uh, electrical boil, uh, water heater, gone, make it gas. Um, if you get dryers, gas dryers, they have them. Um, air conditioning, we can live without, right? We don't want air conditioning, so we can live, God's have his own air, right? We can use it. 
get rid of all these, I bet you 2.5 to 3 kW can take care of your, your house. So you can go off the grid if you buy a system. Any comments, guys? Any questions about this? Comments, questions. Does that make sense? Yes, no? That's how you design them. So all these panels are right here. Now the strings that I, I told you about, guys, here's the strings. Here's 2.5K, 2.5K, 2.5K. When they tie them together here, this is where they put the so-called uh, um, combiner. Can you see these diodes here? These diodes, they put them in the circuit so you don't, so a panel cannot feed another panel. So if you have a short circuit in one panel, you could, you don't feed the energy right through it. You know, you started diodes. I don't know if you did, but you guys started diodes. Diodes allow the current, is their valves. They allow the current to go one way, not the other way. So by putting a couple of diodes here on the strings, they can direct the current away from the modules, not into the modules. Who cares? If you have a short circuit in this module, guess what? If you don't have this diode, the current will come here, bang, and go cook that pen. Now you're burning another panel, another string next to you. So the smarter than Chad, they put a couple of diodes to control the flow. And there's a the fuses, of course, a couple of fuses. Why do you think they have fuses? Short circuit in one of them, the fuse will open. And then they connect them, they tie them together. This is positive to positive, negative to negative, and they take them all the way to the inverter. All the way to the inverter. That's your DC. There's another way, um, AC modules. This is DC modules. AC modules, guys, they have the inverters right next to each one of them, and they tie them together, and they take them to the panel. There are two systems. One they called AC modules, and AC a DC module is just a DC. Creates 30 volt DC. An AC module creates 38 volt or whatever 40 volt AC, right? Or uh, 120 volt AC. Typically they're going to be 240 or 120 AC. So they collect them, take these voltages and dump them directly. No inverter. The inverter. So how do they do that? Because we generate DC right at the panel level, guys. They have an in, a, a micro inverter. They call it. They put an inverter. Every single panel will have an inverter in the back of it. That inverter. What voltage do you want? 24120 up. Psh, here's we micro. Tiny little. It creates a little bit of energy at 24120 for you. Then you tie it to another 24120 and a third 24120, and you start, start collecting these panels at the AC level. The most common ones is the DC, probably you've seen, you've seen them. The common ones, at least I've seen, is the DC ones. But there are also AC panels that convert, right? They take, they can, they use the photons, convert them to DC here, but they have a little micro inverter right at the bottom of that panel. Why do they call them micro inverters? Because tiny little ones, they convert tiny little energy. Then they collect this energy and they tie it to the grid. Any comments, guys, any questions? How the system works? Exactly like batteries. Exactly like batteries. Uh, I assume so. I've never installed them. I believe so. That they're more expensive than you don't have an inverter. Um, but it's, um, you know, the same thing on the AC, at the AC level, you have to convert. I don't know why they're not that popular, though. The DC seems to be more efficient, I believe. That's why we're using them. Um, at least most of the stuff that I've seen are DC, converting with DC level. I, probably, I, I think it's price-wise and also efficiency-wise. Here's what the solar thermal will take. So these panels I'm looking at, they could be the 10 panels that we talked about, guys, right? 10 panels um, that can give you 300. Um, or the, uh, 2.5 kW at 380 volts, uh, 10 panels, right? Connected together, right on top of the roof. Okay, any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions, comments, questions about how you connect them? Easy, in series, get your higher voltage, in parallel, more amps. In series, higher voltage, in power, and in parallel, more amps. Okay. Inverters, when you put your inverter, guys, we'll talk about the inverter in a second. As you think, you have to put it in a place where you have ample amount of working space. So you have to have a three foot, a minimum of three foot working space in the front of the inverter, like any other panels, working space. You can have more, more than one inverter tied together at an AC level. So I can have an inverter one, an inverter two, an inverter three, 
both of these inverters are coming into a panel. Um, and of course, when you come to a panel, what do you need to do? You need to put circuit breakers. So here's a system if you need more power. Here's the three inverters. Each one of them has, a, say, a 3.5 kW, 3.5 kW, 3.5 kW, 7, 10 and a half, right? 10 and a half kW worth of energy coming to your panel. Here's my panel, my uh, 200 amp panel in dwelling. So that's, so if you need more, you can either tie them at, at the AC level or at the DC level. Can you just see that I can have multiple inverters tied to the same panel? Or I can have multiple strings tied to one inverters, to one inverters. So there's multiple ways. Ultimately, by adding more inverters, more power. More panels, more power. More strings, more power. Can I get you to understand all these to get you more power? So instead of 10 now, I can have 20. I can have 10 here, 10 panels here, 10 panels here, 10 panels here to get me this amount, right? Or I can actually put these 10 inverter-wise, put them in here, um, and these are all tied together at the AC level. Um, so here's my, we got that one up, and at the AC level here, tied together, we don't need this one here. So here's my positive, here's my negative. Same thing, and they come to the inverter here. They come to the inverter. That's at the DC level. We could combine them at the DC level or at the AC level. So there's different ways. Um, your inverter, guys, typically is coming next to the panel. So you bring your, uh, your, your energy in, your energy out, directly tied to the... Well, the way they tie, either you tie it to the line side or the load side. Here's my load. Let's just assume load line. You can tie here, or you can tie at the load side. We'll talk about tying which one is the best in a second here. You tie it to the line side of the meter or the load side of a meter or the disconnect, depending on how much how much energy you want. <clears throat> um, okay, Article 690, you guys talked a lot about the regulations. We'll talk about this one for solar photovoltaic system, um, the requirement. Now, I want to remind you guys, Chapter 1 through Chapter 4, talks, it also covers solar photovoltaic system. For example, conductors need overcompetition device. That's in Article 240. For example, uh, installing PVC conduit or EMT conduit. That's in our, uh, Chapter 3. You have to adhere to the rules of Chapter 3. As you bring, like, our system here, we put a uh, 2-inch EMT conduit. We brought it all the way to the lab. We put conductors in it. Which rules apply to all this installation? Chapter 3. You know, so solar photovoltaic system is an electrical system. Chapter 1 through Chapter 3 in the NEC code book applies to it unless it's modified or added to um, by chapter, uh, by um, Article 690. This is everything in the code, guys. Typically, if it's a special system, the code as assign a, an article for it. Does it mean the other Chapter 1 through Chapter 4 always applies to everything electrical with modification in its own chapter or article, like in 690? Since we're doing utility interactive, can you guys highlight the word the interactive? Interactive system, and since you're running it, operating it in parallel with the grid, with the utility, you are running, you are acting like Excel Energy, running with Excel Energy, your, 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 uh, your system. Because of this, we have an article in the secret book, guys, 705, applies to this installation. So what the heck is 705? Interconnected electrical power production sources. What this tells you guys, if you decide to be a big boy and have your own generator, run it to, or could be generator, or also could be the solar system or wind. Produce energy, connect with the grid, and shoot the energy to the grid, to the utility so they can consume. Or you can offset your, um, your consumption, if you are to do this, you have to have a protection. You have to have certain protection. The protection that the, uh, that qualifies for the solar photovoltaic system, guys, they call it anti-islanding. The anti-islanding system, guys, if the grid is down, the solar photovoltaic system is down. That's it. As simple as this. They have electronic protection inside the inverter where the, it's constantly monitoring the voltage coming from the grid. And if the voltage coming from the grid goes to zero, what happens if the voltage coming from the grid goes to zero? We lost the grid. It shuts down the inverter. 
That's the only way right now that you can run an interactive system with the utilities, requirement by code, requirement by electrical utilities. So you get a storm, knock down the transmission distribution or distribution line coming to your neighborhood. You think your solar system is going to be your backup power, right? Wrong. Interactive system, it will shut down. It cannot work unless it senses power. That's protection. The reason for this one, guys, if it continues to work, what happened? You start pumping energy into the grid when it's down. Two things could happen. Number one, if you have a short circuit in the grid, you're going to burn your system because you're feeding a short circuit. Or if they're working on the lines, the linemen people working on the lines and you are feeding, you're energizing the lines, right? What happened? You, you could be hazard. You could kill people. Because they, you know, they don't want you to kill the linemen people when there's a storm, knocked a couple of uh, distribution lines. They don't want you to go kill them, right? So that's a safety, safety, um, safety precaution. Okay, you can. Um, here's two ways of connecting, guys. Uh, your solar photovoltaic system. You can connect, and we'll talk about this one. Like I said, in less than a second here. The way the way you connect this. Suppose that. This is a 100 amp panel, right? This is my house. I have a 100 amp panel here. My system is 240 volt. 240 volt. I now how much if you do it this way, this is called the load side, the load side connection, guys. You bring it like I said, literally circuit breaker, like you're connecting an air conditioning. You bring a circuit breaker from the solar for voltage system. So here's my panels here. Here's my roof, and I put my panels in here, right? Here's my panels, my four panels, time together, time together, time together. And from here, I come in to uh, my inverter, my inverter, positive, negative. And then from here, um, I came to, from here, this is what you basically see here. This is what this is, including the inverters that will be sitting right here. So that's what you're seeing, all the panels, everything else. Utility and active system, panels and inverter. They're bringing it here as a 240. So if this is 100 amp, this cannot be more than 20 amps. There's a requirement in any secret book, guys, that says um, you cannot exceed more than 120 of the rating of the bus. So if this bus is rated for 100, if this bus is rated for 100, um, right here, 100 amp, you cannot exceed more than 120 on it. So if I have 100 coming in, I'm limited to what here? 20 amps. So if your service is, is 100 amp, long story short, you cannot, by code, install a system more than 20 amp. This way. So what, what the heck is 20 amps going to do to me, Chad? That's uh, not, a, not, not a good system, right? So when you add them together, you can't exceed, like I said, the rating of 120% of the rating of the bus. Because you, you're bringing 100 amp and 120, that will give you 120 um, amps out of a 100 amp rated panel. So you can't go higher than that. You can't put 30 amps on this panel. What happens if you want 30 amps? You have to change this one to 200. If this one is a 200, 200 amp panel, then you take, this becomes 40 amps. They allow you up to 40 amps bringing to the pan as a load. Now what happens if you want 100 amps or 200 amps? No problem, don't be mad. Come over here, can you get here right in here, put a circuit breaker and put your system right here. Now I have 100 amps. That power can be pushed to my neighbors or down to my panel to be utilized. Depending upon the Excel guys and electrical utilities will control the meter. They will allow you to sell certain amount. So they don't allow you. They don't want you to be in the in the uh, in the business of selling power too. So they have a bi-directional bi-directional meter here. If you tie at this point, and they allow you to sell say 10% of what you produce to the electrical at a certain rate. After that, they give you a ridiculous rate that you don't even want to do it. So long story short, when, right now, when you do a system like this right here, if you do it here, 20 amps, 20 amps, they barely can make a dent in your load. So you can't sell anything there, right? 20 amps on a 100 amp panel, that will offset some of your load, 20% of your load is off, right? Or even more, depending on what, what the actual load on your panel. But if you put it right here, then you might produce more than you can consume, then Excel will allow you to shoot 
to sell them. And I don't know what the rate is right now, but for a certain amount of, so this amount of money will give you this, uh, this amount of energy will give you this amount of money. After that, will give you this tiny little amount of money. So it doesn't, there's no incentives for you to shoot the energy back to them. Anyway, so most of, right now, the most of the dwelling, at least, the residential ones, are meant to offset their own consumption of power. They allow you to, uh, Excel allow you to offset all your power. So if you want to get off the grid, I, I hate to say the word get off the grid, but if you want to produce all your energy that you consume, no problem. There is no restriction on that. The minute that you start producing and shooting on the grid and selling your neighbors, now you're getting into the business of electrical utilities, they have limitation how much they can pay you. So no problem, generate as much as you want, but guess what? Power your neighbor, but we're not gonna pay you for it. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's why the limitation, most of the people limited to their consumption, um, because if you go higher than your consumption, they don't pay you a lot of incentives in Minnesota anyway. In other states might be different where they can pay you because they need the energy credits. Every every state guys have its own legisla legislation that require you to have certain percentage of your energy, clean energy. I can't remember, was it 20 or 20 percent Excel or something like this? So if you can't produce that 20 percent from renewable energy sources, and it's hard for you. Excel has been really good in Minnesota. They have the hydro and they have tons of things. But in other utilities, they might not be able to if they have these regulations. They depend on the public like you. So when you install a system like this, they give you incentives. Oh, go, no problem. We can uh, we can get credit for it. So there's a lot of credit and business and um, issues related to it. Okay, so you can tie at the line side of the disconnect or the load side of disconnect. If you If you go at the line side right here, no limitation on how much you can do. The only limitation is what the utility is bringing to you. So bringing 100 amp, your limitation 100 amp, 200 amp, 200 amp. If you put it right here, the limitation right to the load side, the limitation is you cannot exceed 120% of what the bus is rated for. So if your bus is 100, then 120% of 100, uh, 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 20, you can go 20% because you can't go more than 120% of the bus. Any comments, guys, any questions, how you tie your system? Two ways, a lot of people, uh, math, they do it this way because it's the cheaper, easier way, and they offset their consumption of energy. Any comments, guys, any questions? Comments, questions about that? So that's your uh, electrical. Here's the, um, like I said, there's the second way, but remember, if you do it this way, like we said, this is 200 amp. Now I can have up to 200 amp going there. And some of this energy will be coming to me and other energy will be going to the grid. And, and here is Adam's house, Adam's house through the grid. And I'm, I'm now empowering Adam's house, not just my house. I can't, I'm gonna put a big question mark here. This is where you get into agreement with electrical utility. It's not just easy. You can power my, I can power your house, but not get paid for it, right? So there's a lot of agreement how much you can, how much you can pull in the grid this way. This way, no problem. You can pull as much as you want down here, basically as much as you need, but pushing it on the grid because bi-directional. So if you're pushing on the grid, your meters start going literally backward, right? And uh, if you're pushing it in, you're not, if you're pushing it in, your meter is not consuming anything. You're pushing it out, your meter is going backward, counting backward. Any comments, guys, any questions? Any comments, any questions? Two ways of connecting. This is called the line side here, or the load side. Remember, the load side was here. What's wrong with that side here? Limitation. What's the advantage of this side? Cheaper, easier to install. I can right now go to my panel, put a 20 amp uh, circuit breaker in my panel, put solar system and wire it. The only thing that required is for this circuit breaker have to be bolted on. It can't be plugged in. You have to, you have to plug it and bolt it to the panel because it's a disconnect, an AC disconnect. So that's um, what I wanted to show you guys. Let me just go over a couple of slides and almost... So here's, we talked about the solar photovoltaic system. Um, here's what I would like to highlight a little bit. This is how they build the solar photovoltaic system. If you look at the interactive ones, you can get, you can get multiple, multiple streams. Here's one, here's two, 
there is three. So suppose that this one, each one of them is 380 volt, 380 volt, 380 volt, and each one is 2.5K, um, each one of them is 2.5K. They group them together, guys, here. At this point, you got, you got yourself a system 380 volt um, at, what's the, oops, I'm going to here, at, um, uh, 2.5, 2.5, or 7.5. So that'll give you a 7.5 kW system tied together. Now, right here, the way you, this, this is called thermal plate output. The way you size this conductor, I'm going to get into the sizing now. The way the code says you size this conductor, DC conductor, very easy and straight. You use 1.25 times 1.25 times I of the panel. That's how we size it. So if the panel is 100 amp, you multiply it by 1.25 times another 1.25. Why two 1.25s? Anybody remember why? Thank you. Thank you. So 1.25 for continuous load and the other 1.25 to accommodate for short circuit. They want you to size the DC conductor. The DC conductor, guys, they want you to size it, uh, the conductor to be able to handle a short circuit inside these panels. So anyway, that's why I can't emphasize the two 1.25s that you have to do. Uh, you need to have a disconnect here to disconnect to the AC and DC level. Then you have to have a disconnect here to disconnect to the AC, in the, in the AC and DC level. How do you size the AC part? Not, not big deal. 1.25 times I inverter, the inverter. The inverter output, take the amps of the inverter output, multiply by about 1.25 and size your fuse and circuit breaker and conductors on the AC level. On the DC level, take the I of the panel, the I of the panel or the string, multiply it by 1.25, another 1.25 and size your fuse as well as your, um, your conductor and your disconnect. That's how we size guys the fuse and the disconnect and the conductors on the ACE on the DC level. Well, the, the conductors can handle a short circuit. The ground fault, you have to have a ground fault protection though. They want you to, there, is, there will be a ground fault protection. Yeah, didn't they say that it was dangerous though because like, their short circuits are so small that the uh, small they, currents are so really dangerous that they're really. Yes. Dangerous. Yeah, yes, uh, they could be, yeah, they are very small amount, but it's it's a, a fire hazard. The short circuit, there is a fire hazard. Um, that's why you want, they want you that, I believe the photovoltaic system will be able to detect some of these short circuits, but they want you to size the conductors to be able to handle it, not to burn. So if you have a short circuit and if you went the positive and a negative of one panel and short them like this, again, take this, short, positive, negative. It's supposed to be sized to sit forever, and it will not heat. The conductors will not heat. They just keep burning the electricity in the conductors. The conductors get hot, but they don't burn. That's what sizing these conductors is. Same thing for the string, one panel or multiple panels. That's where, where now ground fault, they prov you, you have to provide a ground fault, meaning a ground fault, what is a ground fault? A ground fault to the positive, take it to the frame of the panels. That's a ground fault. A positive to the negative, short circuit. A positive to the ground, to the frame, a ground fault, right? So if you get a ground fault, they have a fuse that trips on a ground fault. They want you to protect from ground fault. Okay, so that's how we size this system. This is called interactive. Hybrid, guys, you can have a wind, you can have a generator, engine generator, photovoltaic, tie them all together and bring them into an inverter. You can feed at the DC level or you can feed at the AC level. So that's you can have multiple sources of power tied together and on a DC level or an AC level and tied to the grid. They call it a hybrid system. Stand alone. Now Chad lives in a boonie and he wants to go off the grid, right? No problem. You put your solar photovoltaic system, your 2.5 kW, kW system, bring it here to, uh, you have to have a charger. Now, if you're off the grid, what's the problem with being off the grid? What happens when the sun goes down? zero power coming out of your system so you have to have a backup power what's your backup power batteries so if you're off the grid you didn't hear me talk about grid here batteries with the interactive we don't or with the um with the hybrid because you have multiple sources of power here you have only one source of power the solar 
you have to have a backup power. Your backup power is battery. So what you do is battery, you have to charge a batteries. When you charge your, now you charge your batteries, then you take the, the, the energy that you charge, send them to an inverter. Now this is your AC load, you feed the AC load. Or if you live in the boonie land and you want to go off the grid, you can buy a DC refrigerator and you plug it into at the DC level. So you can, you can, this is DC equipment. So now, and they make them, they make equipment that run at DC. So now you can have in your shack, in the middle of nowhere, you can have DC fridge and AC fridge or DC light that you can feed at the DC level. What's nice about feeding at the DC level, guys, you don't lose energy in the conversion. Every time you convert energy from one, one um, form AC, DC to another form AC, you lose energy. So they allow you to utilize energy at two levels, at two levels. Any comments, any questions? The most common one right now is this, this interactive because in the US we have grid all over. You can't be you go in a place where there is no grid almost. Um, so, and you don't want to have batteries. What's the problem with batteries? Guys? You put batteries in, and batteries are high maintenance. You have to take care of them and maintain them and change them every, I think, 10, 15 years. You have to change them and charge them. So you create other issues. So a lot of people don't want to mess with batteries. They just want to offset their consumption of energy by putting a couple of solar panels. When the sun is on, I cut my bill by 80%. When the sun goes down, no problem. I have Excel covering me. Is there? Um, well, just so to be clear, I was just going to ask when they said uh, it's not required to have the EMP conduit or what they put to that, when, when would that be necessary? Okay, good point. Now, here's my solar panel coming here, and I have my combiner here, and here's my, this is all on a roof, and I'm bringing it to my panel. So from the combiner, now I'm on a roof. Right, I have to protect the conductors with a conduit from here all the way until you, you reach that disconnect here. That has to be EMT or PVC or rigid conduit. It can't be a cable. What's your requirement? It's it, you need a conduit protection. It doesn't have to be EMT. I can't, any kind, you can use PVC schedule 80. You can use EMT. You can use rigid. What they don't want you to use is they don't want you to use a cable. That why because if you put a conduit here you have a conduit here right the conduit will protect your conductors remember these conductors don't have a whole lot of protection so they want you to put uh if you put them in a conduit the likelihood of damaging the conductors in the conduit is much less than if they were just an uh, um, an se cable for example coming down right all the way to the disconnect wherever the disconnect right next to the panel they protect them good point so, um, so the, I would emphasize also the disconnect, guys. You have to have a disconnect here. You have to have a disconnect here. When you tie it to the grid, you have to have an over temperature device here. So they have a lot of disconnects. You also have to have labels. So, for example, you have to label the disconnect here, AC, photovoltaic, disconnect. And you have to uh, label this one, photovoltaic, AC, disconnect, photovoltaic, DC, disconnect. You have to label, so label it. You label this one, you have to label this one, you have to label this one. All these have to be labeled with a sticker that says caution, DC disconnect, photovoltaic DC disconnect, caution, for the uh, photovoltaic AC disconnect, caution, photovoltaic AC disconnect, or, or you know what I mean? So all these disconnects have to be identified. Um, on this side, guys, on all these also, they, they put a label that says both the line side and the load side could be energized. Because if a disconnect, a lot of us, you have a disconnect, you disconnect it, this is dead, right? And this is alive. In an AC system, by the way, this side of the disconnect is alive and this side of the disconnect is, is alive. Both the sides of the disconnect are, are alive. They could be alive because when you disconnect it, you're just not putting power into the grid. You know, so there's a lot of issues, guys, involved in the, in the disconnect. Um, you you have two sources of power alive. All what you're doing is just tie them together. But there are two sources. This is alive. This is alive. And you just when you disconnect them, you just you don't connect them together. But both of them are hot in both ends. That's a major safety hazard if you're an electrician working on it. 
we talked about this one guys okay oh here's a, here's how the ac system looks i don't know if you see that this is an ac i don't know if you see that shaded area that's supposed to be your ac um panels ac panels here's your inverter micro inverter we talked about these two guys so that's um that's basically all what i wanted to talk about in terms of solar photovoltaic system um in terms of grounding grounding of the system guys they require you with the panels what we do when you put all your panels together here um they, they rack them you put them in the rack when you rack them they require you to tie the rack the rack has to be grounded tied you tie the rack with um, um an equipment an equi uh, grounding electrode conductor of typically number six copper cu so you take that conductor and take it to the panel all the way to your panel or to the grounding electrode system in your building so you put a number six copper conductor tied to tie the frames multiple location the frames and take it to the ground electrode system or they take it typically to the inverter in this side to the inverter if you're outdoor and you have solar photovoltaic system you are supposed to drive a ground rod so if you have the panels in your backyard you have to supposed to drive a ground rod right next to them and ground them to the ground rod. uh what else about the solar photovoltaic system we talked about disconnect sizing we talked about sizing them guys 1.25 1.25 on the dc 1.25 1 1.25 on the ac level um so that's this the last thing is the article that talks about it here's article 690 you can look at the same picture that we're looking at it the solar photovoltaic system if you go through it guys there's something called bipolar so for a photovoltaic system um bipolar photovoltaic system it's positive and here's another negative negative and oops um, negative and positive i don't know is positive you hear you hear them talk about this this is where you get positive positive negative here and you get 120 here volt this is dc 120 volt here and this is a 240 volt that's a bipolar you can get two voltages out of a dc system bipolar system um so you look at the identification here where it tells you, you have to group and identify all the conductors coming out of these strings uh cautions you have to label warning electrical shock hazard if a uh, ground fault um, is indicated uh, normal ground conductors may be um, may be ungrounded and energized so it you know that's um you can run your system as a grounded positive or grounded negative guys they typically take the negative and ground the negative through a fuse circuit requirement we talked about this warning um this is where the warning we could disconnect solar photovoltaic system. We get rid of this. Um, so they have um, here's a, another warning where uh, bipolar photovoltaic area disconnect of neutral or grounded conductor may uh, may result in over voltages on. Okay, so now if you have to bipolar and you disconnect the neutral, it could it could create a high voltage. This is really interesting for us guys in Minnesota. The panel that I told you, they're rated for 38 volt. That's the panel rating. Based on the temperature, that the lowest temperature that you encountered, we're in Minnesota, so we probably, I would say the lowest that could be minus 23 to minus 31, right? We could encounter that one Fahrenheit. Then your multiplier is this number. Then you have to multiply this value by 1.23, and that will be that will be anybody has a quick calculator here so 1.23 times 38 that will get you 47 47 volt this is the voltage rating of this panel if the temperature guys goes down the voltage believe it or not the panel start producing more voltage the lower the temperature the better in terms of solar photovoltaic system they love cold weather they produce more voltages out of them What's wrong with this? If you're not, if you don't take this into consideration, you can exceed the voltage rating of the equipment. For example, I can have a, a wire rated for 600 volt, and when it gets cold, it, when it's hot and warm, is okay. When it gets cold, 
the voltage in that wire now is reaching 750 volt. What happened? It damaged the insulation of the conductors. So it could be a hazard. So this table, they call it correcting, an habit correcting table for the voltages. So that's a, a major thing when you deal with solar photovoltaic system. We talked about sizing the 1.25 guys, um, over temperature device, uh, disconnecting, multiple disconnects, energy storage backup if you have. So that's um, that's basically it in terms of wiring methods. What type of wires you can use? Any type of wire improved in the code, as long as you put them in a conduit to the point where you tie them to the system. Um, so that's that's basically uh, it in terms of um, grounding. We talked about the grounding too. With it, you have to pull a number six grounding conductor, grounding electrode if they're outside, marking, mark them with the voltage and so forth. Um, so that's there's at the end of this article, guys. Is um, and we'll talk a little bit more on it about if your system is more than 600 volt or more than 1000 volt now, it's going to be. Um, you can have a solar photovoltaic system higher than 600 volt, believe it or not, not allowed in residential. So we'll talk about this a little bit more when we go to the commercial. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, any questions? I hope we'll give you guys a, a quick idea of what you're, um, what you're up to when it comes to the solar photovoltaic system. Um, I can't emphasize to repeat, guys, you have solar panels. You series them, you get higher voltage. When you put them in parallel, you get higher amps. In both cases, you get higher power. In both cases, you get higher power. If you have more voltage, you get higher power. If you get uh, more amps, you get higher power. Do you guys remember what the amp, what the power is? Power equal I times V. Now, can you, um, Matt, my friend, what happens if you if, if V goes up or if I goes up? Well, how do you make V goes up? You put more more panels in series. How do you make I goes up? You put more more strings in parallel. So by increasing the current or increasing the voltage, you increase the power in a solar photovoltaic system. And that's the name of the game. The name of the game, are you going to add more solar panels or more strings? You start adding either panels, adding the voltage. There's a limit how much voltage you can go before you exceed 600 volt. Then you start adding strings. Strings, strings, strings. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions about solar photovoltaic system? I think that's all what we have here. Um, talk about marking them and labeling them. Um, when you have a solar photovoltaic system, guys, the disconnect of the solar have to be labeled at the panel. So if it's not next to the panel, you have to tell that there is a solar photovoltaic disconnect at the panel. So that if there's a fire and they need to shut it down, you have to identify the disconnect the AC disconnect of the solar photovoltaic system. That's about it. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Karen, does it make sense? I hope, guys, one of you will pick it up when we do the commercial project, and I will help you size the system, and we'll, uh, we'll add a couple of panels. They're really not hard. You've seen a couple of pictures of panels signed together. Let's uh, decide we'll do 380 volt. Yep. Here's the thing, get your 300 volt, how many amps we want, how many strings we want to add, depending how many room we have on the roof, right? The, the issue with panels, adding panels, always room on a roof. Do you have room on the roof to put all these panels? So there's limitation. Um, so thank you.